Hi, we are back on the latest episode of the Silver Fox Hustle podcast and it's me, Shasi, the Silver Fox himself. And uh, before we start, don't forget to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, we're everywhere and click on that follow button. Now, I'm very stoked today, very, very stoked because in the studios, uh, we have a one-third of the founder, one-third of the creator, one-third of the host of the number one podcast here in Singapore. And we, we are going to talk about podcasting. So today's podcast is all about podcasting. And, uh, you know, they host a No Holds Barred pod, which really touch on the everyday lives of people, uh, which really endears them to their crazy fans, I got to say. Now, they speak their minds and re resonate with the Malay community here in Singapore. Uh, I have to say, they are an inspiration to all podcasters here in Singapore. Let's not waste time. Forget about Joe Rogan. This is Za Ismail. Hey, thank you, Sashi. Thanks, man. I I'm um, <laughs> I'm really stoked. I'm I'm looking at your setup. Man, this is a lot. Of, this is a lot. Labor of love, man. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Uh, about. I, I think two and a half years or so. And you edit your own videos and yeah, all that. I do this. Crazy. And on top of your like, full-time job. Yeah. Madness, man. Thank Respect. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, a shout-out to your partners in crime, Raja Razi and mm. Din. Uh, sorry, I can't have because the setup is so small <sighs> that I can't have all of you inside. Lah. But I think uh, you will probably speak up for yourself as well as when we come to the podcast side, mm. I think you'll speak for them as well. Right? Sure. So, uh, shout-out to them. Uh, before we start, I want to ask you something. Yeah. You work out a lot. <laughs> Dude, uh, I think I I feel the demands of like growing old. I'm pushing mm. 40s right now. I'm mm. in my late 30s. Okay. And I feel like there's a lot of young cats up and coming. Yeah. I need to match up to their energy. So I think with wor working mm. out, uh, it gives you a lot of energy to do a lot of things. Wow. And and I, I, was, I was watching stalking, watching uh, <laughs> some of your Instagram posts, uh -huh. all right? And you were doing your live shows. Mm. You were bare bodied. Damn. You were rapping. You were singing. Oh yes. Do Do you know you reminded me of who? Oh who? LL Cool J. Oh damn. Right. You, you know oh, when, yeah, when, yeah, when yeah, he's yeah, performing, yeah, he's bare bodied yeah. and all. But yeah, yeah, you know, brilliant, right? I, and I think do do you, have you always been working out, or is just like a no? It's something that I think I I just recently <laughs> discovered. Yeah. And I think it's something that I like. Mm. It gives me a sense of discipline, something to do, right. a sense of routine. I'm right. very chaotic. I think you're, you're a creative person as well. Mm. So mm. I enjoy that cha chaoticness. But I think yeah. having some sort of routine kind of like brings you to the ground and okay. makes you work better. Nice, nice. Now, uh, you know, uh, we shall call this episode mm. the OK Let's Hustle episode. Uh, let's do it, man. Great. Yeah. Nice. Let's start off a little bit about, you were a teacher. Yes, I was. Uh, yeah. In a typical MOE school? Mm. In a primary school? Yes. What yes. did you teach, by the way? I used to teach English and Science mm. for five years. Uh, I jumped between several different schools. Okay. You allowed to say the schools or not? Uh, I don't know, actually. Did I say that? it? <laughs> I think one of it, uh, my notable experience was in St. Gabriel's Primary School. I really enjoyed ah, Okay. Because yeah, I was in charge of football. Mm. And uh, I think it was very, it, very memorable. Okay. I think we were the top four in nationals. Wow. And then with a limited budget on coaching, it was really, really uh, an interesting experience. And I, I think I really remember that very pinnacle moment of my teaching did, career. Did you at that time mm. when you were growing up, did you want to be a teacher? Or is it just like oh, after NS and uh, just... <laughs> I was actually, can I say this? Yeah, I'll just say it. I was moonlighting as like a freelance d radio DJ. Okay. Uh, but the school didn't know about it because oh, okay. uh, it was a small station and okay. it was a Malay station. Ah. So in circles, uh, in small circles, they really know what I was doing. Mm. But I was really doing kind of actively outside, right, of, right, the, right. Yeah, outside of school. What do you like about teaching? Man, it's so rewarding. Yeah? Uh, I think the fact that you can shape someone's lives mm. I'm not saying that 100% mm. but knowing that you hey, that's, a, a, that's like a typical cliche answer no, no? it is as cliche <laughs> it is but it is really, I, I don't know how to explain I, I'm not yeah. I'm not even here to like uh, promo educating or mm. education if you, if you have a passion I tell, I tell you teaching is a calling man mm. if you're doing it for the money you're never going to love it like, I did it because I loved it right, right. I think what made me stop short of continuing the career was just all admin work behind it man that sucks <laughs> yeah, I you know I I've I've I have lots of uh, friends and my wife is a teacher as well yeah. and yeah you know I can understand and I do lots of admin work as well right mm. so yeah I think that gets to you sometimes yes it goes over uh what you want yeah. to be or bro, what you want to do and parents bro <laughs> I mean thank you so much. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You get that a lot, right? Yeah. It's 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 uh yeah. And uh, what did you? Oh, obviously you like mm. that about teaching. You don't like the parents part, uh, the yeah. admin part, and yeah. stuff like that. So you do uh, football coaching as well. Uh, I have zero experience in football coaching. Okay. But uh, I enjoy watching football. Mm. I enjoy coming to the games. Okay. I enjoy, in a sense, at the point time, local football. Right, right, right. Uh, I was crazy about uh, football development for the young. Mm. I was studying a lot of uh, different uh, things that's happening in different academies. Yeah. Um, but I also have a very dedicated, uh, like uh, another teacher was also in, okay. uh, in the same CCA, and he was just as passionate. Yeah. And we were bantering between each other. You know, there's some school mm. politics going on, like not enough money to hire a proper coach <laughs> and all that. But the passion was there, bro. Okay. And it was really interesting, and I and I loved it. I love yeah. every single moment of it. Can you say why you quit? Why I quit? Because radio offered me a job. Ah, man. right, right, right. Yeah. And you were by then 27, 28. Yes. And yeah. and you started DJing uh, in R- Ria or Warna? Uh, in Ria. Ria. And I was quite late, actually. What, uh, uh, 20, 26? Yeah, it's a 27-year-old stepping into like, the entertainment line. Is it? Line. It is, I think. Why? Uh, normally, radio DJs, the fresh ones, fresh out of poly, fresh out of uni, 21, 22-year-old, That is a very good age ah. to start a radio career. I started quite late. I'm, I'm like a mid career kind of thing. But before that, you were like, like you said, right? You were doing like here and there, yeah, that, that, yeah. That kind of, and you, you, what is it about DJing? Like, like, did you like music in general, mm. or that, that you know? <laughs> I am an introvert in person. Really? Yeah, really, really. When I'm in a room, I'm, I'm completely myself. I don't have to look at a crowd or whatever. Whatever you see, uh, like the facade of me on stage, that is totally as a performance. Kind okay. of like persona, okay. but I am most creative and most effective in a close room. Ah. Yeah, so I think I really enjoyed that. I love the sound of my voice. Mm. I love the sounds that I create, and right. uh, it's just that this little experimental box that I'm being left alone with, with certain red markers. Yes. I'm allowed to experiment. I love that about ah, DJ. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, and and the voice. Mm. Is it natural? No, it's no. not. I went to school for this. Ah. Though. So what 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 is a voice coach uh, a voice class what what is it? So here's the thing like the older DJs will tell you if you want to make your voice more mature more textured more sexy mm. like this things. like this yeah like. I, I don't know like, I, I think it can be even better as you age two things whiskey and and cigarettes but of course this is really bad don't do it right right but it's the but, but you did both no I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't <laughs> okay, okay. but there were other techniques okay. the older DJs were teaching me how to lower my voice. Um, I think naturally my voice is very chirpy. Okay. Uh, I was a soprano back then, uh, uh, as like a, as a young Seriously? boy. You really no in a no the joke. school choir. Yeah, in a school choir. Which school, oh, by the way? Did you go to? Secondary school. Ah. Yeah. So okay. my voice is naturally chirpy. I wasn't a smoker, <laughs> but um, she has taught me. I think shout out to uh, the OG Swati mm. Ali. I, I guess she's still working in Warna. She taught me certain voice techniques, and there were a lot of senior DJs down there as right, well. Right. Taught me how to like give me a lower baritone, a cooler more like a tone voice okay. I gotta give them a, a lot of credit for mm. the foundations that they've given me nice yeah. nice and and you know you, you worked there for about six years or so mm. as, as a radio DJ mm. and uh, what was the experience like did, did you did you like it I think it's a mix of feelings like uh, naturally as a as a young uh, radio DJ there are certain things that you want to do But at the same time, uh, you are unfortunately still in a quite squared industry, bro. Like this is this is being mentioned by my seniors themselves. Like okay. They say, I know you want to try certain things, but let me just tell you, you quit a square industry to be in another square industry. She ah. told me that, man. So I was like, whoa, there's the things that I, I can do, but I, I understand that my limitations. But at the same time, um, they gave me enough space for me to experiment and uh, I kind of enjoy that, bro. Honestly. Be- because there are laws and, and you know, yeah. you know, What what's legal, what's mm. not to say? Yes, yes. You know, I I think that that's a little bit of a. <laughs> not only that, like uh, there is a certain decorum that you have to okay. be on air. Yeah. Like there is the acrolectal version of the language that you got to speak versus the colloquial ah. version. So this colloquial speak is not allowed on radio. Bro. Okay. So, but it resonates the most with listeners because ah. it's what they speak. Correct. So there's there's this this junk mm. as a radio just like, oh, what am I? Supposed to speak in a very Queen's English. It's 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 like uh, what they teach now in in schools, the Malay language. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Yes, yes. I feel uh, that is very 
uh, cardboard age, lifeless. Mm. Maybe it's okay for education, mm. but it's not okay for speaking, man. Because I know, that's what because I feel. we don't speak like that. Exactly. We don't. We don't. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So six years there, and and along the way, right? Mm. Were you already already thinking of you know? Okay, <laughs> uh, I, I'm planning my my road ahead. But oh, did you ever think mm, mm, mm. of the trajectory that you would take? Because mm. that trajectory is like. You know, with the yeah. with the podcast and all. Yeah. So, did you ever plan something out? Like, what what was it like? I have I've never planned this thing out. In all your honesty, I think um, at that point of time, I was already consuming several different podcasts, notably ah. one called Don and Drew. I don't what, know what, what year was this, by the way? Dude, this was when I was in NS. Which oh, oh my wow. gosh, when was that? Like it was like twenty ago, twenty years ago, bro. So, so people who are watching and listening to this. Mm. Podcasting is not new, but it is way. not. It is not. It's it's it's, it's old. Not not old old, but yeah, mm. it's it's been around for a long time. Mm. You know, but lately that it's like yeah. yeah. So so when I listen to Don and Drew Drew died by the way I don't know, okay, really, okay. You know but Don Don Richmond is still around. Mm. For me, he was the godfather of podcasts, and at point of time they were operating like using a third party website. Okay, there's no Spotify, nothing of like that. You need to download ah. like the MP threes for like twenty minutes. Of <laughs> I I kept. I kept wow. the episodes and they were really creative. I was thinking, oh, you actually stretch the limitation, the the possibilities of audio entertainment. It's madness, bro. It was even before Joe Rogan. Right, right, right. So I was thinking like, hey, let's... No, I, um, I didn't thought of actually doing it. But at that point of time, uh, before I quit radio, I was already consuming podcasts like right. for, from Joe Rogan, from Conan O'Brien. Yes. There were other uh, notable podcasts in America. Logan Paul was starting out his. Yeah. So I was thinking like, there's not one notable one here in Singapore so okay. let's let's start one so you quit right so you quit yeah so what happened then like 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 what was the plan and how did you meet up with these two guys Dean right. and so here's the thing like initially I didn't plan to quit but there was a change in management bro. Ah. so as with changes of management at times they bring in their own people that they like to work with and unfortunately I felt that I wasn't part of their plans Okay. they're making things a bit difficult for me okay. so I was thinking man I gotta make my exit because I cannot foresee myself working in another like 2-3 to three years okay. with the station I felt that I felt my passion was dying I felt I was dragging myself to work I was thinking let me prepare some sort of exit plan and at the point of time I was doing uh, wedding DJs as well ah. So I had like a whole <laughs> gig uh, of of wedding DJs to last me the whole year. Okay, they would pay me a comfortable like three k a month, even if I would okay. just work on the weekends. Okay. I was thinking, okay, I have a year to fail, so let's right. do this. Let's walk out and do something. Even if I have fifteen listeners to start all over again, I'll do it. I call Razi. He was my uh, ex partner uh, with the station. Okay, and then I call uh, Din. Din was. Uh, expelled by the station <laughs> a few years back for playing the F word at a point of time like his oh. mistake but, yeah. but it was really interesting you, you mean saying the F word? no he he ripped off like an audio clip and he did not vet through it and he accidentally played that clip so this was in the in the Malay station? yes bro oh. it was crazy it was crazy so I was, okay. thinking, I was saying hey let's let's do this man it's like yeah why not so we set aside like a humble $200 bro just to book a studio session right. and we record our first podcast no hate no third just, just whack it man really yeah just like that just like that three guys just thought yeah. why not just why not why not and it was it was out of the curriculum of radio at the point of time we were taught to do two minute talk sets after two minute talk sets you got to play songs okay we were told as jocks that no one wants to listen to your talk sets. They want to listen to the songs that are being played. Okay. Now, this is a different format with podcasting because you are talking from end to end, bro. Yes, yes. Like 30 minutes on end, 45 minutes on end. It was certainly something out of the norm that we were doing. True. So, we, we decided to give it a go. We played and it was a good response. This was in 2009... 2019. 19, right? Yeah. It, it wasn't far wasn't away. Far. It, wasn't it, wasn't, far. it wasn't a long time back, right? Mm. And, and... Wow... And and I thought that there was a business plan, like as, <laughs> as in as in you know okay come guys yeah, initially there wasn't man <laughs> really yeah yeah okay so then things got going right mm-hmm. now this is the podcast part and and listeners and and future podcasters or whatever you mm-hmm. know if you want to learn these kind of things I I think this is the way to go mm-hmm. so then it got uh, popular and stuff like that yeah. so what happened in terms of then okay thinking more into it like uh, yeah. uh, a target audience for example uh, 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 a logo for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, 
mm. a title for that. Yeah. How, how did that happen then? So I thought these things came by the way. Within the two months, we're thinking what sort of logo we want to do, what does it mean, <laughs> and then we're looking at you know it helps because Spotify gives you like good insights. Like during our radio days, we were um, we were cross referencing from other agencies like AC Nielsen, mm. which did radio diary Correct. service, and there were no uh, real time insights. So we did not know. Uh, I mean, they tell us that this is the demography they are speaking to based on a survey that's done by two hundred people. Correct. And we've never seen these two hundred people before. We don't know who they are right. in our lives. Right. Versus the actual insights which tell you these are your age group. They're mm. listening to what time to what time, what time they they putting off. So those stats and data actually help us a lot, okay. bro. Okay. Studying to the data, like if you're starting out, yeah. look into your data. There's the answers. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So you you get your data and whatever, and then you work backwards and yes. So what is your target audience? <laughs> As of now, it is the 25 to 40 year old. That is the highest. Male, demography. female, uh, uh, more males. Male, yes. More males. Males about like a uh, 57%. And obviously the Malay community because you yeah. pre- predominantly you do it in Malay. Yeah. You, you speak the Malay language in the sure. podcast, okay? Yes. And equipment wise when you first started out, mm. when mm-hmm. you first started like you said, right? You just mm. got into a, a studio and, and whatnot, yeah. right? Mm. So how do you, how did you do go about doing this? Right now you have your own studio, right? Uh we are still renting it out. Okay. Like we're paying someone. We have a okay. full timer to actually handle our stuff. But back okay. then, um, because we were radio DJs, we had a lot of contact with uh, freelance studios outside. Okay. Uh, they were doing their own music and all, all right. that. But largely, these producers are music producers. Okay. They're not podcast producers. Okay. So we had to we had to come in and we tell them like these are our expectations. This is what we want to do. Make us sound like this, this, this. And they said they gave us a price. And I think uh, with our networks, they were able to actually give us something decent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for us to put on Spotify. Nice, nice. And so, so the equipment wise is all from the studio. Yes. Yes. Yep. Shout out to Studio Forty Seven. They're Brilliant. in Woodlands, I think. You I think? think? I think. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Memories. Right, yeah. right. And listen, the, the the reason why I'm asking you all this is mm. so that you you guys are so popular and in terms of you know uh, popularity and stuff and and success, it's also because podcasters might not know or mm. people who wants to you know do podcasting might not know what goes into podcasting, right? Mm. So firstly, we got to know, you know, target audience first. Yes. Uh, what you want to speak about? Mm. How about that? Oh. Dear. What What do you speak about? In, in, guys, listen. I, I just wanna, <laughs> I just wanna read out. Yeah, this is in Malay, by the way, right? Oh, so yeah, if you yeah. can uh, translate it into English, right? Uh-huh. So these are kind of the 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 episodes that you come out with the title, right? Oh, damn. Okay. I'm just gonna read out, lah. Okay, and these ahead. are quite latest ones, right? Yeah, Ma aku suruh stop maki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what is that in English? So my mom asked me to recently stop uh, my vagaries. Okay. Next one. Podcast, yeah. Next one. Aku cantik tapi gemuk. Yeah, I'm cute, but I'm unfortunately fat, a bit obese. You know? <laughs> okay, suami aku kena sayang oleh maid. Oh, my husband got uh, kidnapped by the maid. <laughs> yeah. And aku kena tuduh cakap F on air. Oh, I was um. Oh my god, how do I translate that? Uh, you know, I was, I was framed. Accused. I was accused. I w- yes, yeah, thank I w- you, man. Yeah, oh, I was accused. She's saying the F word on air. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, how the hell mm. do you guys come up with? With firstly topics like that, mm. and then obviously with the topic comes with the the title of the episode, right? Mm-hmm. What? How? So I think like uh, <laughs> for myself, I have been an evening drive time DJ for quite some time, and I am someone uh, who's easy to dance with another jock. So mm. if you put me with someone, I can ah, dance with that person okay. well. There are some jocks who are very alpha in nature. And mm. they will possibly shine alone. Okay, okay. There are some people who are able to dance well okay. for other people. Like for me, I'm able to do that. Okay. And with Dean coming on board, um, we share that chemistry as okay. well. So sometimes having three people sitting in 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 one uh, room, it helps to uh, articulate certain things. And we're trained to talk on air. Like we we talk almost every day okay. on the radio station. So <laughs> this is something of second nature to us. Okay. So at times we and 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 it helps with a lot of life experience. Like you mentioned these are real life yes, experiences yes, that we yes. share. And I think uh for that matter it's quite I would I don't I don't say it's easy but it's manageable. Okay, so so for example, right? Today let's say today later you are yeah. going for a podcast, right? So, I have no idea what I'm talking about, man. Seriously? Yes. Really? Yes, yes. yes. So you just just go go out there Wing and okay it. maybe we just 
okay some mm. something said mm. in the newspapers or whatever and then yeah. just go go on with it yes bro yes so there, there are several like concepts that we do certain days we do this thing called curan hati which is we plug ourselves to the clubhouse audience okay, okay. so they'll be the same as back then when we in radio we're taking phone calls from okay. listeners okay. so they share certain things that right. they experience and I think with technology is you can get two or three callers Uh, at, at the, the same, same time. time and it adds a different kind of texture to your whole podcast right. you're speaking to people uh, online and okay. then you're getting a different perspective and okay. we're reacting and we're laughing right. so that in itself is one concept mm. Yeah, and then we set aside for a week possibly we sit down and we talk about what's happening in our lives and then one day of a week we will try to bring in a guest okay. yeah, but what we talk about is something that we'll sit half an hour before Okay, we're going to do. Um, okay, yeah, we okay. feel the energy, we feel the vibe, and then we wing it. Ah, yeah. wow, that's amazing! No, no, seriously, that's amazing. It's fun, bro. It's man. it's amazing, man, and it's so just spontaneous. Yeah. What's the most difficult part about your job, uh, your podcasting? What mm. is the most difficult part? I think at times when we go into our niche subjects. Okay. What's your niche? Make, like for me, I like to have. A lot of deep, worldly conversations, and I know sometimes it can be very detrimental to the show because it <laughs> it detaches. Like I, I get really in the zone. Okay. Kind of things. Sounds like, uh, my friends would be like, "Bro, you gotta pull this out. This is not for the masses, man. Things a bit too." So what? What yeah. is Dane's? Uh... Dane, wow. Dane is into music. Ah. He's into heavy metal music. Okay. He's into that whole Sufism okay. uh, subculture in 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 religion. He likes to talk about like very mystical things. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Raja, 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 Raja Razi is an out and about hustler. He he's very uh, alpha male. He likes to talk about <laughs> the struggles in life. Ah. He likes to talk about you know certain uh, swagger moments that he have mm. went through in his life. It's very interesting to listen from his perspective. It's a, it's a good uh, it's a good mix. Man. It's a good mix. Yeah. But I I also have this thing the thought that. Sometimes it's easier to work alone. True, is, is that true? Because I I mm. have that impression. Because yeah. sometimes you, you want to do your stuff, and true. then he says, "No, mm. I think we need to pull it." Like you said, right? Yes. Pull it back. And then you're like, oh, then mm. you do you you can't do what you want to do. You know mm. that kind of thing. Mm. Do you do you get that feeling sometimes? Uh, I I do at times because okay. I have ever operated like as a solo person on air before right, like right. Uh, on other slots I've done 2 to 6pm that's lastly a very solitary mm. uh, slot where you, you you speak on your own and I can hold myself but I'm not a very strong uh, personality to be on my own but I can operate like that uh. so at times when you do shows on your own you tend to like have a certain structure a certain okay. way you want to do it yes 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 and I'm sorry but at times certain ideas that your friends throw you might want to like no I don't think I want to do it that way right. certain yeah. ego right. so really it's managing that yeah. yeah understand understand now what you are by the way a mm. full time what, what what is it What what is your full time podcaster I think I'm a full time like uh, no, what was it called like a uh, 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 self uh, employed. Yeah, so yes, that's the word. Self, I'm, I'm self employed. What is a typical day like for you? Mm. So, uh, <laughs> I will normally sleep at about 5 a.m. 6 a.m. We do our recordings late. We call How late? Way. How late? Um, sometimes we start at 10 p.m. Bro, because we run our own businesses outside okay. of our shit. Okay. Like Razi runs a debt consultancy agency. Right, right. Then runs uh, an events company. For myself, I run an online audit editorial. Okay, okay. So, the witching hour is where we really banter, okay. where we come together and we share a lot of things. Right. And then we record away till like 3 a.m. And then we have some, look, we procrastinate quite a bit as okay. well okay. Uh, between the three podcasts. So, uh, we'll end about five, five will be the latest and then we'll come back. We we have like a quick sleep and we'll wake up. Uh, like for me, I'll wake up in the afternoon and I will be preparing for gym. Okay. My gym starts at 3. Okay. So there's a lot of like my supplements, my pre-workout, <laughs> whatever it is, my food. Right. I'll go to the gym, right. feel quite refreshed, have a shower, come back and and prep to do this all over again. So it's a, almost a daily thing. Yeah. Right? It's almost yes. a daily thing. Mm. Wow. And listen, this is the juicy part. Okay, go ahead, man. You make... 30k. Wait, 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 wait. You just now you said three podcasts, right? Mm, mm, mm. So there, there are. There's Plan B. There's Plan B. And and the other one is. Uh, NJU. That's the religious vertical. Okay. So what? 
ex- explain to us what 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 that is. Oh, so the uh, NGO Vertical is something. Uh, it's it's like a project that we wanted to do for the longest time. We have uh, deep seated religious roots. We wanted to do something for the community. Okay. Uh, although there's lesser amount of listeners, like a thirty percent less okay. of what okay let's go is actually having, but it's something that we wanted to do and connect spiritually. So the NGU vertical is a spiritual okay. vertical okay. of us, like uh, an alter ego <laughs> okay. of sorts. We're less edgy there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again. Okay. I mean. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's weird that we all we all have that side. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Okay. You make 30k to about 50k a month. I did not say okay. this. You said this yes, in a recent yes. podcast, yeah. right? And yeah. and I, and it's mm. uh it's out there anyway, yeah. right? Now this is this is uh, an inspiration to me to mm. anyone anyone out there, right? You were a teacher before, mm. you were a DJ before, and now you're making all this money and stuff, right? So there is money in podcasting. There is a lot of money in podcasting. So I think the issue with a lot of podcasters today is the inability to monetize content. True. There is no one to handhold us in terms of a sales structure, mm. which I benefited tremendously during my time in radio. There was a sales structure, and we copied that sales structure wow. into podcasting. So I'm, I'm, it's an open secret. Like at that point in time, we had to do some of the sales ourselves okay. because we were technically a small radio station. Okay. Sales executives like to do sales for bigger radio stations, the bigger commission. Okay. So at times they don't want to push the clients to our stations because the commission is much lesser. Okay. So as DJs, we got to go out and about okay. to find our own clients and push it to the sales rep. Right. So right. Uh, I feel this is a good thing on my end because I'm forced to learn how to do sales. Okay. I'm forced to come and approach how to pitch and we learn what clients are looking for, mm. what is an ROI what is the money that they are willing to spend, right. what's the money that they want to recoup. So these things you learn on the fly as a radio DJ back then. So you learned all this while you were DJing, as yes. you were a DJ, right? Yeah. So when you say sales structure, mm. what, what, what is it? Are you allowed to say it? Oh? Sure, sure. Like uh, back then during radio, we sell like uh, our hourly uh, airtime. Okay. So I would liken it to a podcast. A podcast okay. about an hour long. Okay. You have your lead in, which is this podcast is probably brought to you by blah, blah, blah. Okay. And you have a lead out, which yeah. is this podcast was probably brought to you by blah, blah, okay. blah, blah. And then there is a, se- a segment which is dynamically at insertion. Dynamic at insertion. You can do a 30 minute, you can do like a 30 second um, abrupt and, and that's what a lot of platforms are doing Spotify okay, yeah. doing possibly to your podcast yeah, as well yeah. you listen to it for free but you're forced to listen to a 30 second yeah, ad yeah. you can do that to your podcast you can sell that as an airtime okay. uh, you want to earn slightly a bit more money you sell product talks okay. in between like like a 5 to 10 minute radio sell it with like a product talks about 2 to 3 minutes okay. you talk about your product right. but I think what people want to hear in today's age is not an ad per se okay. but how you subtly Mm. Weave in the product together right. with your, uh, right. with your. Give me, give me an example of how you weave something in. Man, like, how do I do? Oh my gosh! Like for example, today we might be sharing about uh, Razi, who okay. just sold his house. Okay. And uh, he was also sharing about like uh, certain things that he experienced as an ex uh, housing agent. Okay. Like back then, there were some salacious stories. Okay. When he, when he was an agent, so when he was talking about that. And uh, and he's talking about his experience. So our sponsor is a property agent, ah. Wow. So comes in and like uh, talk something in the line of like, "Oh, Razi, during your time is what was quite different than what we are doing today." Right. It was ten years ago, right? You didn't have certain right. rules and regulation. Right. Today we have this, this, this. So you're not selling a hundred percent. It's enough. Like if you can, out of ten things that you wanna you wanna tell about your product, if you can give one, it is enough. So for the consumer. So right now, when that happens, who mm. pays you then? The the podcaster. Who pays? Who pays the podcaster? The the, the, the client. The, the client, the right? Client the pays. client pays the mm. podcaster. Mm. You know, there th- 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 there are ways to do this, and it's it's mm. it's amazing, right? It's it amazing. Is. It's it it's uh, and and I think your your edu- so called education in mm. DJing and what you had to do then mm. really helped you guys a lot, man. It's true. It's true. It, it know, gave us a solid foundation in what we're doing, in everything, uh, the way we audit ourselves. Our ability to talk for very long talk sets, our ability to monetize, a lot of things. Wow, yeah. brilliant, man. So, shows, I think mm. you spoke about this as well. And you guys spent a lot on those shows, like those live shows and yes. stuff, right? Yeah. And it's amazing, right? From, mm. a, from a podcast, yeah. 
you just it's amazing it's unheard of in here in Singapore is this the first thing that uh, actually first time? It's, I, I consume a lot of uh, <laughs> foreign podcasts okay like uh I would say like I follow people like KSI, Logan Paul. Yeah. The blueprint is out there already, bro. Okay. They are doing it first. Yeah. So, I don't know, like sometimes I feel we are a bit slow to mm. adopt what they're doing. So, we're just watching and we're understanding and we're just merely adapting to what right. they're doing. Right. Not so much so like they have a very big market right. but we can do possibly a fraction of what they're doing. There's still money there. So, right. we're thinking like the whole 360 approach. Right. Even back in radio, they, they always mention about the 360 approach. On air, online, and on the ground. Mm. As like as a product, you need to be seen on all different platforms. Okay. So we are online right. on Spotify. Right. And we are on ground, which is the shows. Right. And we are also online uh, through our Instagram platforms, our TikToks, our shorts, and all that. So be seen in every platform and repackage and rehash your content in every possible way for every platform right available. so you can be seen by exactly. everyone and anyone mm. and, and what not right yeah lovely uh, this is a, another thing that I, that I like to share as well and, and uh, about you guys right mm. you, you spoke about in a recent podcast about the sharing mentality yes that you guys had and, and you I, I think you conducted a workshop or yes. what not a couple of years ago yeah. was that before 2019 or that was uh, during 2019. So, so you, mm. you had a, a workshop and, and whatnot, right? Mm. And you said that the sharing mentality is so important to you guys. Mm. And this is, this is good because I know of loads of people mm. who don't have that mentality. Me you, you, you know, it's, it's like, it, yeah. for example, now if I start a podcast mm. and then you want to start a podcast I and I, 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 I don't want to share anything. Mm, 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 you know, that, that kind of thing, you know, mm, you do it out on your own mm, because mm, I did it on my own. So why should I, sh yeah. you know, so th there's this selfishness to, uh, in, in a way. Yeah. And it's tell, normal, bro. T tell me about this man sharing mentality that you guys have. Why? Why do you guys share a lot? So, uh, back then during radio, uh, the mentality that you just shared <laughs> is actually very eminent across the board. Like, you have situations where older DJs will not want to mm. share certain trade secrets. And we understand because young cats coming coming up, uh, they are looked upon as someone who might dethrone you and you might have like a very illustrious career okay. as a radio DJ. So, okay. this young person coming on board, are you trying to dethrone me? So, there are certain things that I'll teach you. But I won't teach you everything. There's a trade secrets that are whole. So I find that very frustrating as a as a young DJ. I was thinking like, and I cannot fault them because I understand this is survive. This is what we call uh, you know, survival survivability yes, yes. in a workplace, and those sort of things happen outside as well. But for me, I'm thinking of the bigger picture. At the point of time when we started out, yeah. there were not many podcasts, and I wanted the money to move from traditional media to go into an ecosystem of podcasts. Okay. We can't handle everything. We can only handle at max six clients yeah. on a good month. There are a lot of companies out there who mm. want to spend. They might not be able to spend the kind of money that they will spend on traditional media, but they have money to spend on smaller stations. So why not? If we have an ecosystem of podcasts, people who are able to do this well, mm. who are able to monetize this well, right. and we are able to generate this... Uh, this mini ecosystem of other businesses coming on board and it, it benefits everybody. Bro. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Any uh, workshops coming up soon? Do I wish Come I on, man. Do, time, man. Come on, guys. Yeah. Do one, man. I want to. I want to. I really want to. But those workshops really consume a lot of time. Yeah. And But I want to revisit this idea once kind of like I've toned down on How my, long was that workshop? Like a, a, a weekend or what, what was it? There was like a, I think a two-day, two-day or three-day okay. workshop. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that was like that was quite affordable at the point time. Like we had an NGO coming in to uh, they they bought in slots and they gave it out for free for okay. aspiring podcasters. Ah, and, nice. Uh, yeah, at the end of the whole workshop, uh, you had to produce like a mini podcast. It's wow, interesting it's, it's hands great, on. Man. Yeah, it's an interesting hands on experience. From that from that workshop, right? Mm. How many do you know that actually became? I know one was the, what the yeah they're randomly yes. relatable, relatable guys. I think. Uh, Six other podcasts wow. kind of like sprouted up from that, okay. uh, from that workshop. Several closed down as well, yeah. and I think there were several partnerships. They were like reshuffled, and then a yeah. lot of things happening. From, from your experience, like mm. because I read this somewhere, right? Yeah. Where when someone starts a podcast, mm. I think the magic number is around seven episodes. Oh yes, and yes, then yes, 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 yes. if you don't make it to mm. like seven yeah. or eight, mm. eight-ish or whatever, mm, mm, mm. you you're gone after that. Is is that true? 
Dude, I honestly feel <laughs> it's the consistency, man. This, this, what you are doing, mm. it's 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 a labor of love. Yeah. Some people will not understand this. Some people can go on for years, mm. although having like maybe two hundred listeners, three hundred listeners, and they're okay with it, and that's okay. You know, you don't have to blow up every mm. single time. You, if you feel that this is your comfort zone, this is a sort of like a therapy, it's your safe space, then do it. But if you find yourself struggling to continue after seven episodes, then maybe this is not your thing. Yeah, you get I me. Mean? That 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 is a wonderful piece of advice. Yeah. That that is great, right? Because yeah. not everyone is going to make ten thousand out of Dude, a podcast. Exactly, man. No, no, no yeah. one, no one. You know, it's it's yeah. That that's great. You know, and and you're right actually mm. because after a while you get so used to it and you like it that yeah. you say, ah, why not? Just you know, Just because you it, like man. talking yeah. and you like talking to people, especially. Mm. That that's great. Now. <sighs> This, there's this thing that I want to talk about. You know, it. I don't know. Is there a line? Because okay, for podcasters, mm. there's no. What, what do you want to call it? Bureaucracy. Yeah, there's and no. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Legal yeah. lines and all that. Yeah. So, so you you probably can say anything mm. you want to say. You want to use the. You want to use vulgarities. Yeah. You yeah. want to do whatever. It doesn't mm. matter, right? But is there a line that Definitely. you guys yeah. uh, draw like? Okay, for example, for me, I, I don't speak about politics and religion, mm. right? I mean, I think that's the safest thing mm. not to do. So, yeah, is there, is there a dr- lot line that you guys... Uh, definitely, like, these lines change every, <laughs> si- <laughs> every single year. Like, okay. like when, we, when we first started out, uh, sky was the limit. There was no, there was no limit. Okay. Uh, our benchmark was the reactions of our listeners. As long as they liked it, we did it. Uh, but of course, we need to be accountable for things mm. that we do. There mm. are certain ramifications that you got to face, especially when you are growing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always say that when you're small, it's okay to experiment. But when you grow bigger, there are a lot of fault lines that you got you to gotta take care of. And we learned that the hard way. I think we got we got cancelled mm. harshly in 2020 and there was a very steep learning curve. And, and that was, for me, an important episode to actually go through knowing that, okay, there are certain boundaries that we can operate from. And these boundaries, although from time to time they might change, uh, this is where we, we experiment and we we push certain lines yeah. In, yeah. in a sense. The, but uh, I feel from time to time we we do group huddles okay. and yeah, and we, we share about like, you know, it's a different ecosystem that it was possibly a year ago. How has things changed? What else can we mm. talk about? What are other podcasts doing? What are people in the West doing? What are people in the Nusantara talking about? Or uh, have you heard about this podcast in, in Indonesia? They're actually doing this sort of things. Mm. Oh, can, can we actually do that? Can we try that shit out? Let's yeah. try it out in my episode and see how people react. Yeah. So it's a lot of yeah. experimentation, man. Right, right. It's fun. Yeah. B- b- yeah. B- by the way, what uh, Za was talking about, it, it goes back to 2020. You know, I mm. think when you guys got cancelled and there was a problem, by the way, if you, yeah, yeah. you guys don't know, you know, there were some problems where even ministers got involved. Yeah. Obviously, fans got involved. Yeah. Uh, women get, got involved. The mm. president of Singapore got involved. Yes, man. Been... You know, so, so yeah. So that was why I was... Because, li- listen, you... Uh, mm. f- for you now you are full time but yes. for me for example I'm teaching I understand man so there is a responsibility part yes you know, I will take responsibility mm. for whatever I say yeah. but th- you what you say must be responsible as well true you know so like you say the line keep keep on changing mm. sometimes you know mm. how did you guys like like recover from that because that was badass shit wasn't oh, it it, uh, it was crazy it was crazy man yeah it was crazy something that uh, when I think back I questioned myself, how did I survive something like that? But, uh, but I thought we had uh, listeners who understood us, mm. who understood our core values, yeah. uh, who understood what actually meant. I think that was very important, the system of support, uh, people who know what you're doing and people who have listened to you since day one, mm. they know who you actually are actually is yeah. and I think stay true to yourself I have stayed true to myself I know that deep inside I'm a good person mm. and I've stayed true to myself mm. uh, so did my partners mm. and I think what listeners and also people would like to hear is uh, how you take certain crises and turn it into opportunities to actually better yourself you you said I think I, I, I heard it right you, you, you were like depressed I was, I was you, you, I was. you were depressed obviously mm. with the other two guys as mm. well right yeah. and if you got loads of support, how? Why do fans love you, man? Because you know you mm. like you say they they crazy, right? Your friends are crazy, by the way. Oh, they, they're mad. Shout out to them, by the way. Yeah. And yeah, why why do they love you? Do you think? I think <laughs> I have accepted my vulnerabilities. Uh, 
Okay. And that is really hard. That is really hard to do. Because a lot of people put a facade online. They want to be seen mm. a certain way. They want to be seen in a certain light. Okay. So, uh, when I say being vulnerable, it's about accepting my weaknesses yeah. and embracing them and being real with them and okay. being okay with them. And that's something that's not easy to do yeah. with the age of filters yeah, and yeah, TikTok yeah, yeah. and your cuts and all that. So, I think that's why people can resonate and people like that. They want to see that vulnerability. Forget about your live shows because mm. I think that could be really like showmanship and uh, yeah. a, a so-called facade or whatever, right? But what, sorts, yeah, but, yeah. So, but what you do in the studio, in mm. the podcast, is actually you. Yes. W- whatever you say, it's your yeah. own opinion. Yes. You know, and and I think that's 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 very important as well. Mm. You know, and and again, shout out to the fans. You know, and yeah. shout out to them. Man. And I and I'll, I also heard that that uh, I listened to that podcast mm. with with you and uh, then there was a certain minister who supported you as well. So kudos to uh, Mr. Minister. That, mm. that was that. Right. Yeah, it's 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 great. Right. And uh, let's move on, mm. Za. You know, and uh, there was this thing called the okay let's hustle 10, oh, yes. ten yes, questions yes. or so let's go man. let's go let's it's go. easy peasy for you my friend okay, here we go who was your favorite guest or guest on the show so far Ooh. I, I know that, that there's yeah. lots there's loads in fact yeah. so maybe just pick one or two or even three like wh- why were they <laughs> uh like locally anything anything like, okay let's start with locally okay. i i enjoyed my conversation with kumar Ah, fantastic! Like I have been a fan of Kuma since the longest time. I go to his hard rock, uh, yeah. you know that that yeah. Mondays kind of thing. It was like growing up. What was he like? He he is, is he like, arrogant? No, he's not. He's not. No, he's not. I think he has matured. He's <laughs> this, matured. He, okay. Yeah, he's this. Uh, he's very different from what I see him on stage. Okay. He has this wisdom, bro. Ah, love it. Okay. Like uh, like he's calm. Okay. I think he un- he understood the setting. Uh, he understood where where right, he's in, right. and the vibe that he's with. Nice, nice. So nice. I really enjoyed his wisdom, okay. and it is funny. He doesn't have to try really hard. He's just being himself. <laughs> like, I really enjoyed. Okay. Like, that was a that was an easy three hours conversation. Man. Three hours. Three hours conversation. Man. There you go. You know, a podcast can be and and again there are you mm. know so many schools of thoughts, right? Yeah. It, should it be ten minutes? Should it be mm. thirty minutes? Should it be one hour? Joe Rogan goes on for freaking yeah. for what? Right? I don't know. Yeah. Just, so whatever works. Yes, whatever works, man. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so only Kumar, right? Kumar Off your head. Local, but for if you're talking about Malaysian, I think the one uh, I had like the most impact was this guy called Diva AA. Okay. Uh, this guy is a motor mouth. Uh, he is edgy as hell. And what is he? Is he a comedian or what? What is it? He used to be a TV presenter. Okay. Until kind of like I think lost his marbles. Yeah, really, 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 really. Yeah, lost marbles, and <laughs> okay. he went into like a bout of depression, ah. and then he became this very extroverted character. Uh, that was super edgy and like really ultra, okay. um, vulgar, okay. which is it doesn't say you are the Malaysian conservatives. Okay, okay, so that okay. was interesting. That was nice. an interesting nice. uh, session to have. Okay, describe yourself in three words. Man, I am actually shy. I'm shy. I am shy. <laughs> okay. Um, I am. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy. I enjoy peace. Actually, as much as okay. I, I wanna shy peace. You know, and I, I enjoy peace. All right. And also, I am a loving dad. I love my kids. Man. Lovely. Yeah, I love my kids. Lovely. Besides the last part, right? Yeah. The first two, right? Uh-huh. If people don't know you, they don't. They would. Yeah. They wouldn't believe you, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. Describe your partners in one word each. Razi. Razi is, is a volatile. Volatile. Volatile, Like bro. the stock market. Yeah, you don't know what yeah. I expect from him, man. Sometimes when he speaks, I'm thinking, man, that's so offensive. I just should I bleep it out? Or, you oh, know, is it? Yeah. Okay. He has, um, he, I wouldn't say he has a way of words. He has problems articulating sometimes. <laughs> so sometimes whatever comes out from his ah. mouth is straight from the head. See, there is I no see. filter process. Ah. It worries me sometimes. So but but, like, but, but you, you told him? La. Yeah, I told him a lot of times. Razi, come yeah. on, man, Razi. <laughs> And Din. Din is mysterious, actually. Yeah? Yeah, he's mysterious. Uh, until today, I'm still trying to figure out certain things, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a ball of mystery, and, and that's, that's a good thing to have. Yeah? yeah, brilliant. An advice you received that has stuck with you till now? Just just one, maybe yes. the most important thing. Yeah, off the top right now. my uh, At that point in time, I think my music director mentioned to me this, and I believe in him. Uh, never believe in your own hype. Ah. Never believe in your own heart. Whatever you create out there, 
you know, if people believe in it, you don't believe in it, bro. Class. Yeah. Bring it. Now, a pet peeve about podcasting or podcasters? Oh, pet peeve. Uh. Putting you in the spot, my friend. Like for me? Yeah, for you yourself. What what do you what do you hate most in podcasting or podcasters in general, right? Man, <laughs> what I hate most in podcasting, like uh, this inability to articulate. Okay. Yeah, at times when we have a certain idea, and then we'll just jam. How do we do this? And ah. then this is awkward silence. But actually, that silence is also content. Actually, you're right. Yeah. It, it's like a mystery, mysterious kind yeah. of thing and then you start going again. Yeah. There's strength in silence, actually. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, recommend three good podcasts. Oh. Local ones lah. Just... Yours, obviously, because I'm on it. And, um, <laughs> man, who else? Um, okay, any 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 podcast lah. Any podcast. Make it easier. Yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of the Joe Rogan podcast. Okay, man. okay. Right. Uh, I listen to Logan Paul. Okay. Uh, podcast. There's something that I religiously consume. I think there's this podcast called Flagrant Podcast by Andrew Schultz. Okay. Okay. Crazy. They're really yeah? good, man. Right. They're the benchmark. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Do you do you ever listen to your own podcast? Yes, I do. You do. Eh? I do. To, for for QC. Uh, ah. The right, QC. Right. They so like what I'll do is after recording, I'll pick one, I'll put it in my earbuds, and then like uh, if I can listen through seventy <laughs> percent of the content, then it's good enough. Wow, that's yeah. good. That's good. That's that's also another uh, advice, right? It's mm. it's good to do a QC yeah. once in a while. If you have a message for OLG fans, what would it be? Uh, stay true to yourself, and like uh, I know, right now it's a very difficult time with the inflation happening. Some of you are juggling two jobs and all that, uh, trying to make ends meet. Uh, I'm thinking. Uh, continue this. It's a very brutal job market. Uh, stay true to yourself and uh, remember, you know, always think whatever that you're doing is because of your family, your loved ones and also yourself. And God willing, uh, in months to come, it will be much better than it is right now. Nice. If you were a superhero, who and why? Oof. Who and why? Iron Man, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I mean, money. Right? It's easy. You, know, you have the charisma. Yeah. I wish I had that sort of charisma with people. Mm. Yeah. He's cool, lah. By He's the way. He's cool, man. He has a way of words. Hey, what happened to your hair? You that you it oh, was yeah. blonde, right? Quite recently. Yeah, because I had to meet my mom recently. So, <laughs> so like these blonde episodes, it only lasts a week. They are blacking it back. Like my dad will not sit well. Really? Say, yeah. <laughs> so you are you are like a mommy's boy, like I, I have to, like, That's how nice. I'm, I'm raised, man. Nice. Okay, now this this is something personal about me, right? Okay. Since you were a DJ mm. and presenter, working at weddings as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Give me a negative point about my style. Negative point. Negative point. Come on, there must be. A few. On top of your head. Come on, let's go. Man, I can't think of one, man. You're so nice and you're, yeah. uh, your vibe is good. I'm not saying this to like, I have nothing <laughs> Because to, you're here. <laughs> yeah. Something negative on you. Man, possibly... Okay, if you really have to push me to say something negative. Okay, I'm pushing. I mean, get better mics, bro. <laughs> No, you sound good, man. Like, I'm thinking, I'm listening to your points, like, no, I can make this guy sound better, man. Okay. True. Wait, wait, you talking about this one or that one? Or which one? What, no, I mean, what? your mic. Your mic, your, your guest. Get, uh, get, get, get a better one, you mean? You know what I mean? Like, a, a okay. good show mic. I think that's a good podcasting mic. Okay, give, give me a brand, please. I think S-H-U-R-E. Uh, yeah, those are like, okay. top of the line in the market right now. Love $500, it. you can get one. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, a, a positive one about my style? <laughs> <laughs> Off your head, off your head. A positive one. I think you you emanate your educator vibes <laughs> in your... And I love that about you. Really? I love that about you. I okay. think uh, it's something endearing. Okay. Something endearing. And I think it's something that as teachers, we don't ah. move away from. We automatically do that. Teachers. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. That's, that's good, man. A message to your haters. Oh my gosh. Like, keep, keep hating. I feel... Keep hating because... Um, from time to time, I do read comments from haters. Okay. Do they, you have many, by the way? I, I don't know. I'm just asking off my head. Like, back then, I used to have. But right now, I think they, go, they grew a bit tired. But from time to time, I do, I do have them. <laughs> but it's, it's instant feedback, man. Yeah. I mean, you pay yeah. consultants to tell you what's wrong with you, but they do it for free. Can I, can I say this? Because I go think ahead, you, you, said, you, you said that they are probably your closet fans. Yeah, possibly. I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. 
Maybe, I, I yeah. Feel, yeah. Embrace it. It's part and parcel of the game. Nice, nice. Okay, your last, very last mm. question. Besides your family, put them away. Your, okay. your, your wife and kids, right? You have mm. two, two girls? Or uh, two? I have a girl and two boys. Two, two boys, lovely. Mm. You are deserted on an island, right? Oh, okay. Who would you want to be with? Oh, Minus man. these four lovely people in your life. I think... Howard Stern, bro. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Why? I don't know. I've, I have like <laughs> long conversations with him. Uh, took, I, uh, that took me by surprise. <laughs> really? Like, like, I, yeah, I've I've idolized him since <gasps> since young. I've seen the shit that he has to gone he has gone through. Yeah. The kind of content that he has pivoted from back then until what he is today. He is out and about the king of all media. Uh, I, l- I, I love how he carries himself I love his brilliance his genius behind it whatever your perceptions of him might be yeah, but yeah. I think I, w- I would want to talk to him Brilliant. on this little island nice nice yeah. well that was the end of the 10 uh, questions I oh, think it was 11 great. questions I think Te- that, that was great easy peasy right yeah it is easy it is. peasy what's in the pipeline for OLG so you, uh, wait, wait, wait. you yeah. are going to do a solo show yes bro what oh my gosh this? what is this so this is something that are uh, you breaking up come on um no we're not we're not breaking up okay. like it's something that we want to push ourselves okay. like uh like how trevor noah is doing his own show uh-huh. and all that so i feel when we come together as uh, okay let's go we have our own live show okay but individually we have our own strength okay. so i would i i've shared this with my partners as well in your free time you have some capital do your own stand up uh-huh. yeah to amass your own followers because every one of us have their own uh listeners who are who will possibly resonate to each one of us. So, make money of that and uh, be intimate with uh, our own biases. Yeah. And when we come back, we can sell even better shows. This br- this takes a lot of courage and, and, and is, whatnot, man. man. It's crazy. So, what are you going to... What? Are you going to sing... So, like... Uh, uh, stand up? <laughs> I've done the whole spectrum, bro. Like, back then, uh, like a few years back when we did stand up in Etika... Wow, uh, Etika. Et- 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 yes, oh my man. god, crazy, right? Yes. fifty packs. At the point of time, we sell things for $55. We, we actually tried stand up. And the feedback that our listeners were giving, like, uh, don't do the scripting thing. It's not ah, you. Okay, okay. Just, we, we come to watch you because we love how you sound like in the podcast. Just be like how you are in the podcast. So, our live shows are largely unscripted bro okay so they come in and they're ready they're coming for listening ear and open mind and we just share stories ah. mm. you, you see I, I just went out oh yeah what, what's in the pipeline for OLG oh, sorry oh. so for OLG we are doing a musical uh, at the end of the year wow we tried to get and secure the indoor stadium but we couldn't bro it's it's so difficult what was the max that you did the last one uh, what was the it was the star theater 5,000 5,000 packs fully 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 yeah. so so we, we went to visit uh, our friends from indoor stadium we were asking about possible slots and we are always losing out to these Koreans I don't think it's a money game anymore it's more of like like I don't know I don't know what, what track also? record or, I don't know lah bro uh, like I'm I'm at a loss right now we're, we're third in line okay. uh, in January so I don't know whether we're getting a slot or not Okay. so that dream will have to kind of like hold on so, so if you don't get the industry then what, what's the next best uh? man I'm thinking about Malaysia bro ah. like there's this place called ZKL 2700 packs we might want to do a show there how how far do you guys reach out to if you, from your stats mm. or whatever research that you've done like like Malaysia obviously mm, 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 Indonesia Indonesia very minimal okay like the insights tell us 95% of our listeners are Singaporeans okay but on the ground it's a different feel like when we did uh, when we did a road trip to Malaysia, we had fans waiting for us uh, ah. in the lobby. So I was thinking like, this can this cannot be five <laughs> yeah. percent. Spotify is not telling us something. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So I think okay. we appeal to the urban Malays in that sense. Yeah. So we're thinking maybe one show over. I think especially in Singapore, right? They they haven't had something like this before ever. Mm. You know, listening. Arguably, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Just just listening to somebody mm. because. You guys are basically talking about things in the coffee shop that anyone else would be talking about but they are so afraid to maybe or they are not doing it out. Yes, yes, you're right. You know what I mean? So that's why they resonate. So that's Mm. brilliant. Mm. Lastly, before we go, uh, Zah, advice for anyone wanting to start out small Mm. with a podcast, just a one-man operation. Man, I would say lower your expectations, man. I'm sorry, I just have to say because some some of them want to start out and, and be 
and be asking questions like, how do we like you, bro? Mm. Like, dude, I went through a, like, I I was from teaching, I was mm. from debating, like, there's, the, you gotta, you know, there's a lot of things that you gotta go through. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you wanna be creating this, do not look at the final product, like, do this because you wanna do this, yeah. man. Because you want to last more than seven episodes. Right. Very true. Yeah. Very true. So if you if you love doing this, you can last more seven episodes, and you're thinking like, <laughs> I want to be doing this every single week, then just continue doing it, and yeah. good things will come, man. Yeah. Zah, Ismail, thank you so much for being Thanks, man. on Thanks, uh, on the pod, and and again send my regards to Din as well as uh, Raja Razi. I, I think uh, you know we, we miss them as well. So mm. thank you so much. Uh, you didn't need to be here but you are here by the way so thank yeah. you so much love for, what you're doing man. For, for, for sharing your insights especially mm. on the podcasting bit and uh, hope you guys grow bigger and bigger and, you too man and, and the, the, the musical I hope yeah, it yeah. happens and uh-huh. the workshop okay, okay. I'll, I'll be signing up by the way <laughs> Right. So, okay, okay. thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sashi. This has been the latest episode, episode number eighty of the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. So, uh, don't forget, click on the follow, subscribe button. We are out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and the works. Till the next episode, the hustle beats talent. When talent doesn't hustle, this has been episode. Okay, let's hustle. Cheers.